club championships. We are in power pools watching returning national champion San Francisco's Revolver take on Austin's double wide. So far, Revolver has been in complete control of this game, going up five breaks to start the game. Now they lead eight to two at the first half. And in a very, very blustery day, how do you think Double Wide is gonna respond, Jackson? Well, one thing that Double Wide needs is their captain to step up, Mike Nattenberg. He started off the game with a drop pull. As we can see here, drops the opening pull. Then he falls over, throw floats over Sullivan's head. Really needs to step his game up. He seems like he's rushing things. And here he stumbles over. See, really trying to force the displaces. If Double Wide wants to compete for the championship, they're going to need their captain, Nattenberg, to really step it up. Scores from other games in Pool E. Ironside already wrapped up that pool. They take half on Sockeye, 8-4. Then Goat leads Rhino at halftime, 8-4. In Pool F, Revolver, as you can see, up 8-2. And Ring up on Johnny Bravo, 8-6 at half. Chain taking half on Furious, 8-3. Pool H, Machine still up 7-1. Opening pull of the second half of this game, double wide. There's a big outside in, rolls out of bounds. Buddy Cahill brings it to the line. It'll be marked by Kevin Richardson. Surprisingly enough, it seems like double wide is coming out in a man defense especially for the offense going up wind and coming out of halftime, you'd think they'd have the time to set up their big four-man cup. Of course, they tried it once earlier in the half, unsuccessfully. Going back to rely on their athleticism and probably finding that fire and intensity in themselves. Cahill to Wiseman. Marked by Orloff up the sideline, 15 yards outside of the end zone. Again, up the field to Hester. Marked by Garrett Hester to Jordan Jeffries. Revolver just working it up the live side. Double wide, not taking it away. Gibson marked by Joy. Joy puts it to Wiseman just outside the end zone. Marked by Orloff. Wiseman looking for his dump. Dumps to Rasmussen. Swing around to Mark Schlag. Schlag marked by Andy Dalton. Excuse me, Dalton Smith. Cahill with it. Looks like we have some sort of pit call downfield. Yeah, Revolver marching up that flick side, live side until they get to five yards outside the end zone. They're still in the middle of the field. And Buddy Cahill going to call a timeout. They're going to take some time. A quick break for Revolver to start off. We're going to take a quick break, too. We'll be back in just a second. Welcome back to Sarasota, Florida. Second half action between the two seed in the tournament, San Francisco Revolver, 
taking on the four seed, Austin Double Wide. Revolver looking to score, Robbie Cahill with the disc. Revolver up 8-2, trying to push their lead to seven. Disc tapped in by Richardson. Up the line to Wiseman, Wiseman drops it. But it looks like he's calling foul on Orloff. Orloff doesn't like the call. Definitely gonna be some, some discussion here. Get another look. There might have been some contact in there. We've been seeing a lot of action from our observers getting involved in this game. Our observers today, Andrew Burmeyer and Mitch Dangler. It looks like they are ruling it was a foul, and Wiseman will keep possession of the disc. Wiseman inside to Hester. Revolver scores the first point out of half. They take the lead 9-2. Double wide defense, unable to get the turn on that upwind point. Those are going to be very important because now their offense is having to go upwind, something they've been struggling with all game. As we were saying, we were saying earlier, talking about double wide's decision to start on offense at the beginning of the game from the downwind side. Maybe it was because they wanted to be able to start on defense going downwind. And if they're going to plan their whole start of the game like that, you'd think they'd be coming out fiery in that second half. And it just looked like Revolver was able to work it up with ease. One contested play. But other than that, Revolver is in complete control on both the offense and the defensive side. Yeah, both both teams expecting to get to semifinals at least. But this game determines which side of the bracket that they will go on, whether or not they will face Ironside in semis or in finals. Right now, looks like Revolver is in control of this game. He's done it with methodical offense. There's a layout D from Sam Canner. Double wide might be opening their rotation a bit. See a couple new players in there. Dave Beershank. So number 42, Ryan Bigley. Bart Watson breaks around to Pat Bayless. It's his first point of the game. Revolver takes the lead 10-2. Again, the difference between how explosive Revolver is playing on defense compared to Double Wide's defense, I don't believe that Revolver is necessarily a much better or a much more athletic team, but they seem to be out here really wanting it more and really yeah, they firing just want it all more. centers. They want the disc. The disc goes up. They're laying out for it. Even if they don't get it, they're still going for it. You haven't seen many layout Ds. Jeff Loscorn has been playing pretty good D. He has got a couple Ds this game for double wide, but no one else has really come brought that fire on defense. Revolver, however, has been amped up the whole game. They have their motto of team unity, effort, and discipline. They say it's those are the three things that they've really focused on to win the two national championships and the world championships. Right now, they are firing on all cylinders, up 10-2 on, on double wide. Double wide's offense going up win. Taylor Casino with the pull. Good float, stays in the middle of the field. 
about half field. Double wide really opening up their roster. That's number 85, Valley Renshaw, to second point of the game. Number 13, Dalton Smith. Also, Scotty Barron's his first point of the game. Loscorn still in there. Barron's with it, marked by Wynn. Wynn with his second hand what block of the game. Lay by Wynn. Layout hand block. That's the thing about Revolver. They're so, so strong from top to bottom that if they, quote unquote, open their rotation, each, each one of these guys would be a star on any of these other club teams. They'd be a universe point player game, like Russell Wynn, Mac Taylor, Adam Simon. Revolver is not slowing down. Now Wynn has it about six yards outside of the end zone. Foul marked by Barons. Yeah, Wynn calls a foul, but a great attack on the disc by Mac Taylor. The huck coming up from Adam Simon. Taylor just runs to it to keep possession. Now Casino outside his end zone. A pick is called. Stops playing the field. Wind really gusting right now. Casino facing the upwind, five yards outside of its end zone, looking to get their second break of the game. <laughs> Casino just rifles that one. Nick right. Chapman. Revolver up 11-2. You gotta think Double White has thrown in the towel at this point. Going down nine in a game that really doesn't have a lot of meaning. They've already clinched a quarterfinal spot. They don't need to put in their stars. Brody Smith isn't playing anymore. You don't see Kirk Gibson out there. I haven't seen Will Driscoll this half. I understand the strategic plan of now resting your starters. They know they're gonna end up in a quarters and if you have the mindset of once you're in bracket play, you're gonna have to beat everyone anyway. It's not a bad idea to rest their players, but it seems like they have, could run into the issue of just not being intense, even with their second lines. If their first line players, their top stars, aren't supporting their second team, well, this game is gonna go away quick, but they can use this as an opportunity. Yeah, so to get, get that intensity back. It's, it, it's a tough move as a player to to really feel like you want to support your team in something that the game looks already lost and you're already looking on to the next game, on to the next day. Pool F action, Ring and Bravo. Ring is up six or nine six on Bravo. Winner of that game moves on to quarters. Loser goes down to a pre-quarters game. They will take on the winner of Pool G, which right now seems like it's going to be Chain Lightning up 11-4. Here's Beershank with it. Dumps to LeMasters. Pick call downfield, disc with Ryan Bigley, marked by Zach Travis. Bigley rips a backhand. Sam Canner getting his body on the line. Oh, but the disc is in. And Beershank, incredible play to maintain possession, toes the line, came out of nowhere, tries to force it into a little window. Yeah, I thought that disc, the play was well done. When it gets macked away, it That's floats, floats, and then comes back in on the sideline. We can't see it on our screen. Our cameraman <laughs> thought it was over, too. Fortunately, they turned it over, but double wide, getting a break as Sam Canner drops it just outside the goal line. Lemasters to Orloff. Orloff marked by Schlag. Cuts up line, Orloff. 
round to Renshaw. Renshaw to Low Masters, marked by Travis. Low Masters looks at his dump, puts it to the end zone. That throw knocked down by the wind. High count situation. He wanted to just get that in a place where he saw some of his receivers. Had to take a shot at the end zone. Watson picking the disc up for revolver on the front cone. See Levy with the disc. Center pass to Watson. Upfield to Sherwood. Canner. Watson. Levy, great movement from Revolver. They look in control. It's Watson to Levy again, and he dumps that off. It's right Eric in Greenwood front of with Eric the Greenwood. goal. It's Greenwood's first point of the game. Very speedy player out of the University of Oregon. Double wide just trailing. Levy to Greenwood. Shank five yards behind. Revolver now leads by double digits. Twelve to two. Revolver in complete control of this game. Of course, they still have to deal with this issue of getting a break upwind. Double wide's offense going downwind. Update from Pool H. Machine is up on truck stop nine two. Winner of that game moves on to the pre-quarters. They will be playing the loser of Goat and Rhino. Right now, Goat up 9-4 on Rhino. So it seems with this win, not an insurmountable comeback, but Rhino could still make it to quarters. But right now it seems that Rhino will be making it to the pre-quarters where they will take on Machine. And then in Pool G, Chain Lightning up 11-4 on Furious George. That game's not over, they, but they pretty much have it locked up. Winner of that game will be taking on the loser of Johnny Bravo and Ring. Which Ring leads that game 9-6. A poll from Adam Simon. A little over half field. Nicholson Nattenberg on the sideline floats over his head. And Robbie Cahill picking up the disc on the sideline. Centers to Schlag. Schlag moves it all the way around to Taylor. Taylor to Simon. And Simon leading pass to Win. And Win, no problem reeling that one in. Another break for Revolver. Double Wide hasn't scored in the half. Double Wide has completely given up in this game. They know they're going to lose. They're down 11. They're just trying to get it over as fast as possible. Big throw here from Adam Simon. With a 20 mile an hour wind in your face, that forehand huck is not easy. Revolver really not subbing anyone. As I said before, they're so strong from top to bottom that they're playing in their quote unquote scrubs. It still is. They're a not very scrubs. Threatening line. <laughs> of course. For the pre-quarters game on the Next Gen Network, we'll be bringing you mixed coverage. We've already had a women's power pool, now showing you the open power pool and the mixed pre-quarters. The start of elimination play here in the 2012 club championships. with the pull for Revolver. Uh, 
Behrens takes it down to Orloff. Orloff over the head. Watson picks up. Watson blanketed. Finds Casino. Marked by Ila Masters. Yo catches it. Swings back to Casino. Casino to Joy. Joy to Chapman. Chapman to Casino. Casino finds wide open Nick Chapman in the center of the end zone. Revolver takes the lead 14 to two. This score not indicative of the talent of these two teams. Orloff's throw, just unfocused. The wind catches it, flips it over. Casino to Chapman. So double wide on their line for offense, looking to score. Captain Nattenberg on that line. Double wide, I'm sure would be happy just to be able to punch one in here in the second half. Nattenberg, captain of the team, still out there. May not have had his best game, but he's still fighting. Still trying to make a team that he's been with for more than a decade improve with these young players out there. Double wide, quick to set up in the vertical stack. The Masters with the disc. Goes backfield to Nattenberg. Barons in the center of the field. And Barons sending it deep and finds. Double wide gets on the board. Finds Dalton. All right. Smith in stride. Double wide, their first goal of the second half, their third goal of the game. Update from women's play. Fury and Scandal will move on from Pool E to quarters. And Pool F, Riot and Showdown will move on to quarters. So it's between Nemesis and Brute Squad. Winner of that game moves on to quarters. Loser goes to pre-quarters. And in Pool F, Traffic and Molly, winner of that game moves on. Right now, Nemesis is up on Brute Squad, 10-6. Traffic is up on Molly Brown, 10-8. In Pool G, Heist and Capitals are both 2-0. They're playing right now. Capitals up on Heist. Rematch of their regional championship. Capitals won that game, 15-12. Oh, excuse me, that was Capitals and Brute Squad. So Heist and Capitals playing. Heist, the new team, covered one of the ga their games earlier. Georgia Bosher playing big for Heist. However, they trail 8-5 to Capitals in Pool H. Ozone and Phoenix playing Ozone up 4-1. Winner of that game goes on to quarters play in. Back at our game. Revolver double wide, Revolver in possession with the disc. Game point possession as Cassidy Rasmussen and Nick Schlag are working it through the zone. Get it upfield to Cahill. Double wide is transitioned into a man. Cassidy gets it up line. Goes backfield to Cahill. Cahill in the center to Wiseman. Wiseman switches the field with Jeffries. 
And Jeffries overthrows the intended target, John Hester. So double wide, able to earn the disc here on Revolver's game point possession. We'll see if their offense is able to work it up the field, maybe get a break. It would be their first break of the game. And Robbie Cahill eats that one up. Goes to Hester. Joy. Joy centers to Wiseman. Hester. Back to Wiseman. And Wiseman goes around the disc floats, but Robbie Cahill, keeping the defender on his back, reels it in, and that will be the game here in Power Pool E. Revolver wins it, goes 5-0 and oh in their two days, and moves on to quarters. Double wide, 4-1, and one, still going on to quarters. And if they're able to win out, they're likely to play Ironside. We'd like to thank all the production crew here to make this stream pro possible. Cameraman Brian Bedord, Aki Odera, and Tim Gilligan. Our director, Vin Bowie, and replay operator, Kimber Coles. Of course, the executive producer, Kevin Minderhout. Today, I'm working with Jackson Kelsey. I am Topher Davis. Again, we'd like to thank Elemental Technologies for encoding this game and all the games on the Next Gen Network. And also like to thank League Vine for providing stats for us here in the booth and for the entire tournament. Be sure to check out LeagueVine.com if you want to get some more in-depth action on all the games this weekend. Thanks again for tuning in here at Sarasota at the 2012 USA Ultimate Club Championships. Come back at 4 o'clock, maybe 3 o'clock. 4, 3.30. 3.30 for the mixed pre-quarters game here on the Next Gen Network.